the searcher drops off, or the, the sense of doership, is there any qualities that arise more often than others? Say, like kindness versus domineer, dominance or love, fear? The, the character changes, it seems, when the doership falls off. So doership emotions stop. So like blame, they've done something wrong, they shouldn't have done that. When there is no one seen there or no one seen here, then that doesn't arise. Because there's still the arising of, you don't become a, a passive being that everything's walked over. There's still no and how I want it like this and this, should, this shouldn't happen, but shouldn't happen in a sense of it's empty. It's not somebody's fault or it's not your fault. There's no, there's still, you don't become uh, completely passive. Um, blame guilt, which is an opposite one. I've done something wrong. I shouldn't have done that. And pride, yes, I got it. Or shame, feeling embarrassed about something you've done. Or expectation, so an idea of something, a situation held up here, and then wanting that situation to live up to it. So when I go to Thailand, I'm going to be lying on the beach drinking my pina colada. And then when you get there and you're in um, a cesspit and you book the wrong hotel, it's just the way it is. I don't know if it's the same thing, but in moments where uh, sort of a compulsion to do something in order to gain something drop off, mm -hmm. there seems to be a playfulness comes up. Yeah. Like I was walking around the ashram this morning and I was like secretly following a guy. <laughs> and, it was, it, and it didn't seem like it was a deliberate pursuit that was happening. It was just fun. Yeah, yeah. He was, what, he was an odd guy. You know, like, and yeah. that kind of childish playfulness yeah. seems to come up. Yeah, it's childlikeness. It really is. And Going that would back. be a common feature? Yeah, definitely. But not childlikeness, like, uh, there's no certain way to say it. it rises differently in, in everybody. The childlikeness is in everything's new. It's only the seeker that's constantly retelling things and deadening it. Everything's incredibly new. And wondrous. It's, it doesn't make sense this whole world. The adult or the seeker begins to think that they've made sense of it and it makes sense. It really doesn't. And that dynamic falls away. So you're just doing senselessly. Like a child again. Like following someone for no motive or reason. The seeker's always living in what will this give me? What can I get from it in the future? And so, so things like that, or sitting, watching people, or an animals, but so little motive to get anything. Obviously, there's natural dynamics of needing to earn money that arise, but it's no longer from that seeking energy, that impulsive thinking about it. And that can be a, a steady bleaching that takes place that infuses your life. And then one day you just realise that that it's gone or you maybe you like a, um, maybe you realize the slow process of it like Ramesh Balsaka he it took two weeks and then he suddenly realized that been, the seeker had been gone for two weeks and then the thought popped up oh the seeker's gone well there's a change going back to the nothingness and and the love. I, I'm more speaking of love beyond the emotional attached aspect of it. Even even the child in this <coughs> empty sensation of experience is drawn towards uh, the mother or without really the attachments more just almost beyond itself to not reach out to that unconditional love that's there. Uh, <laughs> The same in nature, everything in nature is surrendering its natural responses to exceed itself. Flowers don't smell or see how beautiful they are. Orange trees aren't eating their own oranges. They're in a state of equanimity. But by that surrenderance, it still seems this draw towards this love or this uh, unconditional state. Uh, and so when I go back to even meditation, the emptiness is, is a great vehicle for me to 
pull myself away from the story, but only to fall into the current of unconditional movement. There's something for sure that I feel, and, and maybe it's still my story, but the story leads me to service beyond my own attachments. I'm just wondering if that if that's even a spiritual naiveness of you know, a, a love story that I'm telling myself, or if there's a deeper emptiness underneath that love that, or, I mean, I don't know what I'm trying to say, I just really feel like there's more than emptiness. I feel like emptiness is really even the cushion before you fall into continuous equal love, unconditional love. Yeah, but not love as a um, heart sensation experience. Right. Yeah, everything, to know you to be everything, for everything to be you is absolute love. But not as a heart sensation. I feel it there, for sure. Uh, yeah, but it's confused. Yeah. Because often what happens is there is the opening of the heart chakra. But the love that I'm talking about isn't a feeling. But that often coincides with it. But to think it's the heart chakra love or that feeling of love will perpetuate seeking because that love will come and go because it's a feeling. So how do you experience love? Sorry? How do you experience love? Um, love. So there's different types of love. Like um, there is the feeling, the sensation of love. But the love that I'm talking about, as in everything is you, therefore it's absolute love, isn't a sensation or a feeling. It's just a knowing. I don't really know how to put it into words. It's the absence of any hate, because all of it's you. But it's not an, it's not an experience, and it's not a feeling. It's just naturally who and what you are. So therefore, when you get mugged, Blame just doesn't arise because it's you. It's absolute unconditional love, but it's not a sensational feeling. However, the heart chakra often opens, and therefore what happens to a lot of seekers is they get stuck in the idea that it's the heart opening love. But it's really hard to put into words this because if you can hear it, if everything's you, it's the end of all hate because everything's inside of you. It's the end of perceiving all hate, because there's no separation. But it's not um, a bodily sensation. However, often a, a pleasurable love feeling happens, feeling in the heart, particularly when this subject's talked about. But it's not a feeling. I used to find that so confusing and teachers talked about it because there was such a craving for heart chakra love here, for the experience, the physical sensation of love. And so when teachers talked about love, it was like, there was a longing for this heart opening love. And then they'd say, it's not a feeling. And I'd be like, Ugh, what is it then? You can't really put it into words. Unless you can hear, it's the absence of all hate because everything is you. It's the best way in which I can put it. Unless you can hear that, then I can't put it into any more clear words. Just that it's not a feeling. I'm not talking about a feeling. A feeling comes and goes. This is beyond the body sensation.